All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out on a Sunday afternoon to uh, learn more about this upcoming vote. Um, so my name is Kent Haynes. Um, I'm a Homewood resident. Um, and Nick Sims, uh, many of you likely know, he's a member of the city council and also a Homewood resident. Um, and we wanted to put together um, an event to share our perspective, um, both having spent a lot of time analyzing the issue of the city manager, the change of form of government. Um, and we're not trying to hide the ball here. I am in support of this measure. Nick is in support of this measure in his personal capacity as a homeless resident. Um, so this is intended to be um, a presentation about why we think it's valuable. But we don't just want it to be, this is not a rally. We're not just here to preach to the converted. We are hopeful that there are many people here who are undecided, um, don't feel like they have enough information yet, or even you know opposed and, and concerned about voting yes, um, so that we can get all those ideas out there. So um, the way that we wanted to do this was to start with a presentation kind of walking through our perspective on where this came from, why we think it's the right choice for Homewood, and then we would open it up to questions. Um, so yeah, do you want to? Yeah, thanks, Ken. I just want to add a couple of things as we get started, too. And that is, all of you are here because you love Homewood. Yeah. And I think we should all accept that and know that as we go through this discussion and the Q&A or conversations afterwards, um, not to make anything personal with us, right? Because I, we've, we've seen some of that before, and, and that's not where this discussion needs to go. What we need to do is just talk through. And it's okay to disagree and, and not be for this. It's fine to be against this. Just be able to state your why when you are against it and tell your counselor specifically that. Because if nothing else, you know, we need to at least have that level of discussion and dialogue with each other. And so again, thank you for taking your time and being here. Um, before we get started, I also want to recognize um, a couple of other counselors we have in the room. We have Counselor Melanie Deer here today, Counselor John Harden. I just want to thank them for coming. Maybe, maybe public Q&A is not your preference, so afterwards you want to talk to either one of us or uh, Counselor Harden, Counselor Deer, please feel free to do so. Um, we're here because we want to make sure before this vote, everyone is fully informed and has the information that's based on facts so you can make a difficult decision because either you're going to say no and be for what exists now, or you're going to say yes and it's gonna result in a drastic change for the city of Homewood, but it comes with some pros and cons, which we believe the pros are very advantageous, and that's what we're gonna to talk to you about next. Thanks. So the structure here, um, we sort of went through and tried to pull some common questions that we had seen um, through signature gathering, um, public events, um, online posts, and try to hit those major points um, throughout the presentation. Um, the first question is just why, why do we need a city manager? What, like, what is even um, the benefit of this? And Gretchen DeFonte, the uh, city manager for Pelham, gave a really um, wonderful presentation, some slides of which we've included in here. And she included this slide. Um, and if it's a little hard to, to read um, in the back, I'll say this is reasons communities adopt professional local government, governmental management. Um, poor administration by elected officials, declining quality of life for fiscal viability, lack of leadership and vision, ineffective local government services, desire for professional management, and corruption or unethical behavior. And speaking personally, I feel like several of these reasons resonate with me as a resident of Homewood about the current state of the Homewood city government. Um, I should also say, when I say something, it's my opinion, and when Nick says something, it's his opinion, and I'm gonna speak very honestly about my perspective on the way that the government has been running, and that's all good. I hate to put you behind this podium, but you are blocking. Oh no, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I'm not really a podium guy. Um, maybe I'll just do this. Um, and, if, and if any of those, if, if you're not, uh, if you're here, you probably are pretty tapped into what's been going on locally. Um, but if you're not, here are some headlines from Homewood. So. Um, city to reduce out of control number of credit cards, $867,000 spent over 12 months, 
former Homewood Finance Director pleads guilty to embezzling nearly $950,000. New trash collection service continues to Royal Homewood. Um, we all moved through that the Amway's um, rollout, let's say, and I think are pretty familiar with the, the many inefficiencies and the lack of oversight um, that comes from the structure of our government, which leads to um, people feeling empowered to use our city resources in um, inefficient or even corrupt ways. Um, so part of the reason for that is, um, well, really the fundamental reason for that is the structure of our city government. We have, um, the city has uh, over $65 million annual budget, um, over 500 full or part-time employees, and there is no full-time executive at the top who is responsible for managing that organization. So when I think about this, I'm a teacher in Hoover and my kids go to Homewood Public Schools. And I think about the Homewood Public School System. And uh, if Dr. Hefner, our superintendent, was running the Homewood City Schools in his spare time after he got off work from his full-time job, right? And so it's like, oh, we need to make a really big decision about something going on at Homewood High School. It's like, well, we just have to wait for Dr. Hefner to get off work and then we'll ask him. And that sounds absurd, but that is what is going on in Homewood because we have a part-time mayor and part-time uh, city council. Um, and the city council will remain part-time in any form that we're under consideration, but the fact of the matter is having a part-time executive at the top of a system as large as the Homewood city government is, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and now Nick's gonna talk a little bit more about what a city manager is, right? So you hear the, the phrase city manager, it sounds pretty obvious, but there's a lot of specifics there. Thanks. So first of all, um, can't reference the Dr. Um, Hefner parallel, but you know, just thinking about a city manager, it, it's also equivalent to like the CEO of a business. Um, basically sometime, someone responsible for the full-time professional governance of the city. Um, I'm gonna present a couple slides that were originally done by Gretchen DeFonte back in June when we had a city manager forum. Uh, also, Sam Gaston presented a similar sl uh, series of slides back on June 4th when we had that same forum. Um, so, duties of the city manager. Lead city administration and operation, manage staffing and personnel, direct day-to-day -day activities of department, oversee the annual budget and develop a budget, which by the way, I mean, just for reference, um, as, a, as a comparison for current times, um, cities on an October 1st fiscal year annually, um, we typically have the budget presented from the mayor at the last council meeting in August. And then in September, the council has a series of public hearings to discuss the budget to go over you know, all the planned expenses, and then it's adopted at the end of September for an October 1st fiscal year. So right now, just for comparison for this year, um, the city council still doesn't have a full budget yet from the mayor, um, and we're starting meetings, um, I think at the end of next week, um, and, and, and that's gonna be a, a tighter time frame to then review and pass the budget. Now, obviously there's been a lot going on. There's a lot of reasons why we don't have that budget yet. But I'm just saying with the city manager type role, with a full-time professional, we'll, we will be going through basically strategic planning annually, hopefully in the winter time frame, just pulling a parallel from Vestavia around February. And that strategic plan will then inform the budget decisions so that a budget can be presented and reviewed. So it's it's more of a continuous ongoing development and process of the budget. And that's really the ideal because that way the whole team, elected body and department heads are working on the budget to implement a vision for the city um, versus basically it needing to be done um, at the very end of the fiscal year. So that's, that, that means a lot to me because I think that'll be a better way to achieve budget planning when we have a full-time city professional in City Hall. Um, so the, 
The city manager also provides guidance to the mayor and council on policy matters, executes uh, council related established policies, ensures compliance with city laws and regulations, and participates in all council meetings. Um, so for example, execute council established policies. So if the city passes an ordinance, then that ordinance has to be therefore implemented by staff in a lot of instances. Sometimes that staff may be in one department, but a lot of times that staff may be in engineering and public works, and maybe even another department. And that interdepartmental coordination is something the city manager can achieve because they sit at the top of the organization um, to provide that structure and everything. So those are some duties, some additional results of having a city manager. Uh, we talked about that this person coming into this role typically has a public administration or another type of degree, which really re relates to local governance uh, and experience to bring to the table full time. They're change agents, they have a more professional workforce, they have better compensation and training for the staff at the city, where, at cities that are managed by city managers. And a lot of that's because the city manager is able to achieve cost savings, cut wasteful spending, and therefore have money in the budget to pay employees um, a better wage. Some additional results, um, efficiency over politics. This is a city manager role is an unelected role, okay? And there's some concerns about that, but also there's some benefits as it relates to that. You're able to hire the best person that's in our area, in our region, or across the nation, honestly. Um, doesn't It's not someone who's already a Homewood resident necessarily. Um, additional results, equal governance, policy focus. That's a big one, I believe, because a lot of times as counselors, um, we spend our time on some administrative matters. As Kent referenced, there's, there's been trash concerns. Sometimes there's concerns about uh, you know, contractors working before 7 a.m. and we get calls for that, or, or somebody's property, um, you know, has an issue that infringes on another property. And we deal with those administrative type functions, honestly, a whole lot more than we deal with the policy and community vision related matters. A city manager will help us by becoming that centralized person in City Hall to address those concerns, having administrative authority over all those functions, so that then, as a council elected body, we can do just like I was saying before, focus on strategic planning, focus on visioning for the future. There's a department efficiency achieved, innovative services, long-term planning, again, strategic planning, that could be both budgeting or just coming up with capital projects, plus uh, performance and accountability, centralized procedures. I wanna talk about that a little bit because I mean, there's some centralized procedures that we really need as a city that we're missing right now. Centralized HR function, centralized purchasing. Um, Can I share a story about that? Sure. So I was on, and we'll get to explaining this, but I was on the um, committee that, that was assigned to look at this. There were counselors, members of the community assigned to look at this, the whole process. One thing I learned from that is that um, we had the same paper goods company, right? Like toilet paper, paper towels, that sort of thing. Had two different reps who were quoting us two different prices on toilet paper to two different city departments, Public Works and Parks and Recreation. And, um, if you are really familiar with Homewood City Government, you'll realize the only reason that this was ever identified is that um, Berkeley Squires is over both of those departments. And so he happens to notice, wait, why am I paying this amount for toilet paper for these buildings and this amount of toilet paper for these buildings? Those sorts of decisions, those sorts of inefficiencies, if each department is not receiving like sufficient oversight from the executive, they, those things add up. I know it seems silly to be like, we're going to fix the toilet paper in Homewood, but like, all of these things, like executive efficiencies throughout departments, I mean, that's the name of the game here, right? We're trying to, we're trying to use our city funds as efficiently as possible. And having somebody saying, we're gonna have paper goods supplied by this supplier at this price, we're gonna get a better price because it's across departments, these things matter. Thanks, that's a great example. Um, and, and there's instances like that um, that just point to the need for centralized purchases and other procedures. Um, there's greater transparency and fairness in a lot of governments with city managers. 
Uh, if you can go to some other cities and see for yourself that as an example, um, we've made some strides in recent years with having like the planning commission packets available in advance online, having the BZA packets online. But if you go to other cities um, like Mountain Brook, like Vestavia, uh, you'll, you'll see that there's a lot of additional information too available for the public in advance of meetings and also providing background on what the consideration actually is. There's dedication to public service, reduced political interference. We talked about some of that previously, inconsistency and stability management. Overall, what does that mean? Some of these results, it means that these entities, ICMA, ASPA, which is the American Society for Public Administration, and other entities have done research on the council manager form of government, and they found that this structure ranks higher on professionalism, ethics, transparency, efficiency and servicing, reducing politics, and promoting teamwork and cooperation at cities where there is a council manager government. So just want you to know that this is the base of information we've used through this process to say yes, this is this is a viable, you know, preferred structure of governance that we would like to see our city um, move towards. So I think you yeah. have the next thing. Yeah, so so then the question is, all right, I hopefully the some potential benefits are, are clear, but maybe you just started hearing about this when you started seeing yard signs pop up. Oh yes, vote no, that sort of thing. Where did we get here? Like, how did we get to this process? And it really, I mean, you know, the story can go back many different uh, time frames. But the, when I got connected to this was during the 2020 Homewood City elections, um, Nick ran for the first time at that time, as did I, both for city council. Um, Nick won. I unfortunately did not, but um, but we were both in support of a city manager and many candidates. Uh, not all of whom won, but many candidates. Uh, were very supportive of the idea of city manager, um, including several who did win, um, and Mayor McCluskey, um, who uh, decided that there was such an indication that this was something that should be looked at by the city because there was so much interest in it among the people of home. And so um, Mayor McCluskey created this committee, um, which was to investigate different city management models um, city administrator, uh, mayor, council manager structure, and council manager structure. Those are the three basic types of ways that you can get a full-time uh, professional manager. And that committee was um, two members of the council, Alex Wyatt and Carlos Alamon, myself, um, Andrea Savage, who's a business owner, she owns our cookhouse here, um, uh, the former fire chief, and um, former head of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so, um, we met, uh, that just says what I just said. So, we had a meeting over two years ago to organize the committee, um, and then we had basically monthly meetings through the entire 22-23 uh, school year, is the way I think about it, because I'm a teacher. Um, including a public interest meeting in November, um, which I recognize several people here were in attendance to that, and also several people here were in attendance to the other monthly meetings, simply because they were open to the public. Um, this involves uh, conversations with um, nearby cities uh, who use each of these three models. Um, and basically at the end of that process, in the summer of last year, um, we presented our findings on the benefits and drawbacks of the three systems to the Finance Committee of the City Council, who then, um, let's see here, it says it here, they motioned to pursue the Council Manager Structure which is the one that is up for a vote. And um, the full council uh, supported this, and then uh, petitions were collected. We needed to get 10% of signatures, 10% um, of the people who voted in the last municipal election. So that would have been 10% of the people who voted in the 2020 election. Um, so that was gonna be over 500 signatures. Um, you may have signed something like this. Um, over 500 people, about, about 600 people vote, uh, signed this. It was put before the probate. Uh, judge who said, um, all right, we can have a municipal election, it'll be on September 24th. So that was how the decision was made. Um, and now I'd like to talk about why the decision was made to support this particular structure. Did you say 2023 or 2024? So the committee presented its findings in the summer of 2023. Okay. Then it was sort of evaluated through the council process throughout that next school year. That's kind of how I think of it. 
Um, and I don't remember when it officially, but I think that signatures were being gathered way back in March, I think, right? I mean, it was. That's right. Um, so I'd imagine it was February, I think, when it officially came out of council. I think, I think it was February 2024 when it actually came out of council to then begin the petition process. Um, and there was a lot of info sessions and that all went through the petition being submitted to the probate judge in mid-July, it being approved in late July, and the election was announced in early August of, of this year. Real quick, are you gonna talk later about the other part of this where the wards, the wards were Yes. Um, yes, that's that's an important part of it as well that we are going to get to. Yes. So the committee presented it to the finance committee. Did you, as a committee, make a recommendation to the finance committee, or was it the finance committee that made the decision as to what form we were going to go for? I I don't believe we made a formal recommendation. Okay, so it was the finance committee that decided we would pursue this on the referendum. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think we basically just tried to present pros and cons for all three. Um, yeah. Who's on the finance committee? Who's on the finance committee? So, as you referenced to the, I think the report came in summer 2023. As you are referencing, it was it sat with the finance committee for six months. There was ongoing discussion, um, both with residents and other counselors. But the finance committee is Councillor Jones, Walter Jones, Ward Three is the chair. Um, Councillor Hardin's on finance. Councillor Aliman's on finance. And then also Councillor Barry Smith and Councillor Harden is here, and also Councillor Gwaltney. So that's the five. Okay, so this is, I think, the, the heart of this discussion. Why this choice? Why change to a new form of government when there are other options that other cities are using that do not require this, right? Um, so I like th this slide is also from, from Gretchen Defante. Um, but I like it because it shares all of the information um, in a fairly concise way. By the way, um, Nick has put together a great Google Drive that has lots of information, um, including, I believe, this, this presentation in that Google Drive. Um, and we can also throw this presentation in there. There's a QR code back there if you're like, I can't read this, I'm in the back. I totally understand. But let me just share what this is. Um, the first one is the council manager form of government. That is the one that is on the ballot. This is the best stadium model. So if you want to think about it as this is the best stadium model, which is um, it changes to uh, the mayor essentially becomes the president of the city council, one of the five city councilors. The, uh, the rest of the council is made up of four ward reps. That's a little different than best stadium. Best stadium is at large, but we, have four, we would have four ward reps and the mayor, who acts as the president of the city council, they hire the city manager and give the city manager a set of, here are our goals as a city, you know, our strategic ideas and our priorities, and the city manager implements them. Sort of a board and CEO model. The next one, um, the city manager position by ordinance. This is, we were colloquially referring to this as the Mountain Brook model, because this is the model that Mountain Brook has used, I believe, since its inception as a municipality. This is where um, a city council passes an ordinance creating the position of city manager. The city manager is um, enacting the, like the executive duties of the city um, and answers back to the city council. And then the third option is a city administrator. This is what we would call the Hoover model, where the mayor hires a full-time city administrator, somebody who basically implements the mayor's executive duties um, and answers to the mayor, okay? So those are the three options. So I'd like to kind of talk through from my, from my and you know, with all this stuff is my opinion, but what I just said was fact, but my opinion about the uh, flaws with the Hoover model and then the flaws with the Mount Brook model. So first with the Hoover model, um, my, my concern and what we found when talking to city administrator of Hoover and finding out about other cities is that this position works far better in a larger city that can can us uh, like sustain a full-time mayor who then has a full-time second in command essentially that you still have the issue where the city administrator does not have 
the authority given to the mayor. They're just you know, authorized by the mayor to do things, but anytime something serious has to happen, you've still got to go to the mayor. And when we have a situation where we've still got a part-time mayor, you're still, you still have this sort of break in the, in, in the chain where um, they're not able to devote their full time to the administration of the city. Um, and so the city administrator doesn't have as much ability to implement these sorts of things. Like the city administrator isn't by themselves going to you know, hire a department head. The mayor is going to fundamentally gonna need to sign off on that decision, you know, these, these sorts of things. So you can imagine all these sorts of major decisions. Another issue with it is it's entirely dependent on the mayor. The mayor decides, I don't want a city administrator anymore. They fire the city administrator and then we don't have a city administrator. We no longer have full-time perpetual management. Or if the mayor is replaced, you know, doesn't get reelected, decides not to run again, resigns, and the new mayor comes in and doesn't want to have a city administrator, we don't have a city administrator. So we're back where we started. So it's, and it's frankly not that different from what's going on right now where we do have a full-time chief of staff who is supposed to be enacting the will of the mayor. That's the system we have right now. It's not that different. So that's my concern with that model. City manager position by ordinance. This is the Mount Brook model. This is also the model that Pelham has recently gone to. Um, I, I have serious concerns about the legal stability of this model. Let me explain what I mean. Um, in, this position, in this situation, the city council would create a position called city manager that would have the executive authority to do all the things that Nick's talking about. Hire and fire city employees, set the budget, enact ordinances, all these sorts of things. That city manager um, reports to the council. So what is the mayor? What does the mayor do in that situation? The mayor no longer retains the executive authority of, you know, implementing all the policies and hiring and firing and all these sorts of things. And I'm not confident that, well, let me just say it this way. If, what if the city, previous city council had done this and said, we're hiring a city manager. The election of 2020 happened, city council hires a city manager, and Mayor McCluskey goes, wait, wait, wait. So I no longer can do any of the things that I was elected to do, that the, the residents of Homewood elected me and endowed me with the authority to do. You know, the duties of the mayor are in the Alabama state code. So it, do you really, like, would it pass legal muster to say a city council can just neuter the mayor, like remove all of their abilities, simply by ordinance, I think the mayor would have a very strong case in the courts to say the city manager does not have the legal authority to supersede my authority. So then the second that the city manager and the mayor disagree on something, you've got a power struggle. And you've got things you know, where it's like, well, can this person be hired by the city manager or can the mayor fire them? We're going back and forth, that sort of thing. There is a huge potential tug of war there. <coughs> Now you might be wondering, wait, wait, so Mountain Brook has been using this model for decades and it's never happened there. And the reason for that is that at the time that Mountain Brook made the decision to hire a city manager by ordinance, this option did not exist in the Alabama code. And so there was no ability to do so. So they basically strung together, like jury rigged, a system that they thought would help better than just a council and a, uh, a city council and a mayor. And because Sam Gaston, at this point, is so well regarded in the city, I don't think that the mayor of Mountain Brook feels like he has the sort of, you know, political will behind him to try to revoke any of those powers. Not that he even wants to, I'm just saying that they seem to be, it seems to be running fine over there, but Sam Gaston is not a young man. He's not gonna be city manager forever. And at some point in Mountain Brook, there's gonna be a new city council, a new city manager and a new mayor. And I'm very, very curious about what's gonna happen in that case. So I'm really concerned about this, and who else is concerned about this? Is good city managers. Good city managers that we want running our city, I think would be much more skittish about this system than this one, where they know that they have some like, legal firm foundation because the citizens of Homewood said, we want a city manager and we want them to have these authorities, these abilities, these duties. Here, nobody in Homewood voted for this. And nobody in Homewood has the ability to vote for this. So there will never be a vote for this. The people of Homewood will never be able to vote for this. 
The only thing we can do is change our form of government. So these are my concerns. Um, and I actually, I remember, there was a moment when Gretchen DeFonte was presenting about this, and she uh, let forth the fact that she did not, she thought when she started uh, interviewing Appellant that they were an actual, real, codified city manager situation, and only through the process did she learn that it was only by ordinance. And my understanding, and I, you know, you can you can speak to her, um, but my understanding is that Pelham has been very satisfied and is really excited about the idea of transitioning to this because the elected officials see that this would codify some of the things that they are uh, seeing benefits from already. Um, okay, so those are my concerns with that, and I think that what I'm seeing in uh, in Homewood is that there are very few people saying things are fine, we don't need a professional city manager. Most people, whether they're supporting this vote or opposed to this vote, support the idea of a city manager. And that just shows that people in Homewood are smart. And we know that this can, this can work. And the question is, what's the best system? And what I would say is, if you're voting, we're voting for this or the status quo. Because we're not able to vote for this, and we're not able to vote for this. And even if these get implemented, it's not clear to me that they would be stable and secure and be attractive to the kind of candidates that we want. So when we're voting, we're voting for this or the status quo. There's not a third option on the ballot. Um, and now, Nick, you want to talk about it? Because there's not just the city manager, there's a change in the rest of the government. Thanks, Ken. So, um, Next, I just want to kind of talk about what we are voting on. And so a lot of you picked up a copy of the map. Would you, she well, I'm going back to the slide that showed what was the, um, the signature question. You know, the petition? Yes. yes. I'll go back to that really quick. So this is, the, this is the petition that was signed by residents. Petition to put council manager form of government on the city election ballot. We, the undersigned qualified voters of the city of Humboldt, in accordance with the state code of Alabama, petition the probate judge of Jefferson County to submit the following question to the qualified voters of the city of Homewood on an election ballot. Shall the council manager form of government as provided by the Council Manager Act of 1982 be adopted for the city of Homewood? Thank you. Yes. And then, um, so to this question, um, you know, isn't the shift from 11 counselors to five a big reduction in representation? So what are we looking at? We're looking at the actual shift of going from the mayor council form of government to the council manager structure. And the state code says what council configurations can actually exist under the council manager act. And that meant just no matter what, we were going to have to change our ward map because five wards with two ward reps and one council president was not an option. Um, so there, there were several considerations. There were considerations for four counselors and an at-large mayor. There's considerations for six counselors and an at-large mayor. Um, and it's all spelled out in the state code. But we looked at this and we, you know, we received a map which the state drew, and that's the map you have back there. The QR code also has a high res um, version of it to where you can really look at it at your street level. Um, but we looked at this, you know, and, and said, yes, the change from 11 to five is drastic for the voting body. However, is it outside of the norm? And so we looked at cities within the range of Homewoods and cities between 20 to 40,000 people in the state of Alabama and found that a five member council is the most common council size for cities in that range. Um, and, and so actually even some of those that have seven are cities that are larger than us, um, closer to 40, like Prattville um, and Alabaster, for example. Um, but Homewood has an 11 member council currently. That is the largest council in the state of Alabama and a larger council body than other metro areas. Can hold some of these comparisons. Um, it's larger than Phoenix, Las Vegas, Miami, 
Pittsburgh, just to name a few. Our city council is larger than those cities. So when we looked at this change in structure of governance, we were looking at an opportunity to have an effective council body size to pair with the city manager, which is eligible under the state act, which would then long-term be a good team in composition to guide the vision of our city. Because remember, when we go through these strategic planning and budgeting exercises, we're gonna have the city manager, the mayor, the council, and the department heads all working in collaboration to guide the future of our city. And we felt like based on the cities um, on this list, that a five member voting body is very, a very effective size when you pair it with a full-time professional city manager. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. All those that are like five or all these cities are those, most of those at large or do they all have wards or? That's a good question. So to be fair, you know, um, pulling this back together, um, like literally this weekend, I just went through and found a list of, here are all the cities in Alabama of a certain size and just was Googling like, click the city council page on each city. And so I don't have a firm number on that. I will say the majority of them are district based. Uh, like for sure the majority and probably like three quarters of them are district How many have a full time mayor? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I think looking at the list is a number. Uh, yes. Full time mayors. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There definitely are full time mayors. Yes. yes. And I want to just say too, because we, we talk about the stadium a lot as a comparison because they have the same model. The stadia does have all at large representation in their council. And as a discussion with other residents, we thought that keeping ward representation was very important. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, one, one thing, I mean, and, and this was sort of, it was kind of a, it was, it was not foundational to the committee that I was on, but it obviously came up as a component of it. And part of that was like in the public interest meeting, you know, the, these sorts of questions from, um, from constituents at that time. Wouldn't this, by dropping board, the number of boards, wouldn't this require a redo of the Homewood City uh, School Board and others because there's a representative from each ward? So, um, that's a great question, and the answer is uh, it depends. Well, I'll let Nick talk about this because he knows way more about that than I do. It would not change the school board because the school board is actually a specific state code that says, based on Homewood being a class size six city, that we have five school board representatives. But they're appointed from each ward, so you, now you're dropping to four. So there's actually. Or you left somebody out of the mix. You, yeah, I mean, it's so got to be redone. The, the actual reality is, based on the state code, is that all five home, all five board members per the state code are at large. It's, it's been Homewood's discretion to lean upon the council representatives in each district to then select one for each ward. But there's nothing codified in state law that said we had to do that. We just have done that. So no. pull the wool over everybody's eyes. Well, you think your representative is coming from your ward, but that's really not the case. So you mean from for our actual board? Of yeah, yeah. Like I say, we, everybody we, within that ward assumed that person was representing their ward. Now you're telling me that was not the case because behind the scenes, y'all y'all decided well it could have been at large. Well, it could have been at large, but there was no intent to pull wool over anyone's eyes. Just that we made sure that each district in the city had one school board representative. So, so the person who's on the school board physically lives in that ward and we chose them as a representative for that neighborhood and area of our community. Um, I mean, if, if that is deceptive, I mean, I, I'm happy to discuss it. No, I would say it just seems like now that's not what we've all understood. To his point, this is the crux of the issue, period. In my mind. The whole time I've been here, and everything I've ever heard about, everything was directed that, so to, to his point, if you didn't live in that ward, could you fill that position under the current scenario? 
So let me let me just I mean I'll be honest with you. I mean like this is when you know when I fe- I, I'm repeating information I received yesterday. Okay, I asked for a clarification on it based on the state law, and that's when I found out. Honestly, I'm just going to be I'll transparent. I read about it because you sent a link, you know, back and forth. And yes, I read it. It said specifically five people, but it didn't mention anything about tying it to the ward, which is my biggest. Because what's to prevent you from changing something? Well, there really isn't anything. We're running on history here, and everybody's been represented the same way for a long time, and they assume it was codified. Well, you're you're totally right. Thank you, Kevin. Because guess what? This is codified. This city manager structure is codified. That's why we're pushing for it because we don't want any more deception well, or ambiguity. You I mean, said it a while ago. That's why we're pushing for this yeah. model. I mean, you said you said it a while ago, Ken, and you didn't mention the other. You said you looked at four and one at large was an option, six counselors and an at large. Why was six ward counselors in total and six wards not considered? I believe it was considered by the Finance Committee of City Council. So that was not a component of our committee's work, but I believe it was considered. and. I cannot, so then I cannot personally speak to that. Um, what I would say from a big picture perspective is if we were voting on September 24th for six wards and an at large mayor, like a seven member council and a city manager, I would vote for that just as quickly as I'm going to vote for the current one. Because I, and I completely understand having a preference of seven over five or five over seven. I think both, both of those can be absolutely reasonable. What I don't, what I do not agree with is the idea that you would say seven's better than the status quo and then five. And so I'm gonna vote for the status quo. That I I just don't, I think the difference between seven and five, not that it's immaterial. I don't think it's immaterial. I think that it's, I just imagine that some people would have disagreed and then maybe you would have been happier and other people would have been more upset. But fundamentally, both of them are far superior, in my opinion, to the status quo. Can, can I get to, we're about to open it, wide open, I just wanna go through, because one thing that I wanted to do was, you, you know, share and discuss my perspective on um, some of the opposition to this. Um, and, and I'm sure that there are people in here who, uh, um, who would represent a lot of this stuff anyway, but I just want to, to point this out. So this is hard to read. This is um, somebody who wants you to vote now, right? In gray, this is what would occur in their in their framing if we vote yes. Change to council manager form of government. That is correct. Wards reduced to four. Council reduced to four. Council is reduced to five. But I understand what they're saying. Mayor becomes council president. So that's five. That's correct. City manager would be selected by this council. Okay. Now this is something that I want to talk about. And like I said, Nick and I don't agree on everything, and I'm not sure how he feels about this. I'm of the strong opinion. And if this passes and we get a yes vote, the second the next day, I'm going to be like. This city council needs to appoint an interim city manager and allow the next council to do the actual full hiring process. And that's because I think that it, I think that that would make everybody feel a lot better. So believe me, I'm not just sitting here like, we gotta get these people who are current city councilors, many of whom I like, but you know, whatever. I, I just, I think that would be a lot better for the city. Can I say something about that? Sure. Okay. sure. So I will say that the point you make about this current council picking the next or picking the city manager was a discussion that a lot of residents expressed concern with at the two June forums we were referencing. And we've since had a lot of discussion about that. Like Gretchen DeFonte, who's the city manager of Pelham, provided some resources because the ICMA uh, Institute of City Council Manager Group, they had a retired executive um, pool where they actually had there's that and other resources where you can actually find an interim city manager in times when you don't have a permanent manager for a transition, or in our case, where we're trying to stand up our governance initially for the first time. So I will say that this is a discussion that's been progressing that we've been having, and we think that it is a viable solution to address concerns not only we're hearing from residents, but also concerns, think about this, when we go to hire a new city manager, if that person is gonna come in, work for maybe six to nine months, 
and then they're going to have a completely new elected body they're responding to, then that's going to make our um, recruitment process, process really difficult because a manager may not want to interview with one group of counselors and then nine months later have a completely different elected body that they're responsive to. Which, by the way, the next election is August 2025. So if this takes effect, that means August 2025 is when this new city manager would have a new set of bosses. So an interim solution is very viable, and I expect that we'll be discussing that at Finance Committee tomorrow afternoon at 5 p.m. Okay, so you guys see why you know, Nick's a smart guy. So it turns out we do. Because <laughs> that's what we're going to have a little fight about that. All right, so just last couple things. Manager would have executive and operational authority. That is correct. Mayor would be ceremonial and lose veto authority. Um, the mayor would not be ceremonial. The mayor would be the president of the city council. The mayor would have the most important elected office still in the city. So that is, that is not the case. Um, this, is the, this is the proposal here. Um, lose veto authority, I believe, that would, I believe that that would be the case because the council would be passing things. And then, so then what, yeah, what happens if the city manager doesn't do what the council wants? The council fires them. So the council can, all, can always override the city manager because they hired the city manager and if they're not living up to their obligations, they can be fired. I'll go ahead and tell you, when Vestavia changed to a city manager system, their first city manager that they hired lasted, I believe, six months because they were not the right hire for that city. And their second city manager hire has lasted 12 years and counting because they got the right guy for their city. Um, so when you have a city manager that you don't like, you don't have to wait four years to get a new one. And when you have a city manager you do like, you don't have to lose them because they're term limited. So that's a benefit of this position. Going over here, keep the mayor council form of government. There's an Alabama code here that talks about how the city council can write um, an ordinance hiring a city manager. As I mentioned, um, I believe that it's in direct tension with a very nearby code about the authorities of a mayor. No reduction in council representation. That is true. City manager would be selected by the next mayor and council. Well, would it be selected by the next mayor? Or would it be selected by the next council? If they go with the Hoover model, they'd be selected by the next mayor. If they go with the Malbrook model, they'd be selected by the next council. They're not selected by both. They're either selected by one and report to that person or by the other body and report to that body. And then these two, I think this gets to the heart of my genuine concern here. City manager would have operational authority. Mayor would keep full executive authority, including veto authority. What is the legal distinction between operational authority and executive authority. I don't think that that's a legal pair of terms with clear delineations. And I, again, don't think that good city managers believe that either. Again, is hiring and firing an operational authority or is it a full executive authority? Is setting the budget and presenting the budget to the council an operational authority or an executive authority? These things are not clear to me. And that's why I'm concerned about that issue. So, with that said, well, we hope you vote yes. Yeah, yeah, they, but, but what I'm trying to do is, you know, you see a bunch of signs that look like this, and you see a bunch of signs that say no. And I believe that the, you know, the organization that made those signs also made that, you know, thing, and I just wanted to share what I'm seeing out in the community as, you know, so, anyway. But uh, we actually have, I don't, you know, I don't know how effective this will be, but I think it would be nice to be able to hear questions. So we have a second mic that we could just kind of pass around. It's a wireless mic. Um, that, that might be beneficial, so I can't walk all the way loud. Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> Me too. You touched on this a second ago, but uh, so is it my understanding that if, assuming the government passes, that the city manager would not have civil service protection and they would serve at the pleasure of the council? Um, that is correct. That's my understanding. They serve at the pleasure of the council. There's no civil service protection. There's no that can muddy well, things up. What you're saying wouldn't come to the Jefferson County. Um, sorry. That's going to be a big question. So the city manager, I can say that they would, it would be in a contractual agreement with the city council. So it's not under like the personnel board. It's right. exempt. That, that's my understanding that it is not. It's exempt from the personnel board. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes. And just from the, sorry, we introduced counselors earlier. Um, Councilor Aleman is, is now here as well. So thank you for being here, Councilor Aleman. Thank you. 
really this is one with all the authority in our current form of government. The mayor can make suggestions, however, the council can overrule the mayor. Not that that would happen in our current situation, but that could happen. So is it true that the council basically are the lawmakers? Yes, the, okay, the council not, adopts it's not the policy. Mayor, like, like, like that last little point there. It's the separation of powers, right? Where the council's the council writes the legislation, which are the ordinances, right. and the mayor enacts them. Okay, and who chooses the committee members? They serve at the ple pleasure of the mayor. Is that correct? Can you can you explain committee members? Finance committee. So, so the council structure is that councilors are subdivided into different committees, right? There's finance, right. public safety, public works, special issues and planning and development. I'm not talking about the council members. Okay. I'm talking about the people that serve on the committee. You're talking about building and planning, the planning commission, the board. Exactly. The All board, yes. Yeah. So so serve because, at the pleasure of the mayor. Yeah. Um, it, some boards, like previously, are, are appointed by the mayor. But like, for example, for Parks Board, we, you know, eat, again, it's a ward breakdown. I mean, each ward has a representative, and then there's at-large representatives on the body as well, and those are appointed by the council. Same for Library Board, same for Beautification Board now, same for Historic Preservation, Environmental Commission, um, there's others as well, I'm sure I'm forgetting. Well, go back to the Finance Committee, and let's okay. focus on that, because they're the ones that chose which form of government. The, the Finance Committee is a subcommittee of the council with only council members. But did y'all not just say it was the Finance Committee that made the recommendation for which yes. form of government that, we would go to? Yes, yes, they did. The, okay, that's what, that's what my point But then it was still voted on by the full council. Yeah. I understand that. I understand, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, who is on the Finance Committee? I am. Councilor Martin. I, I, I would tell you that this was all presented to us um, by, by his committee. Um, put it, it was all put on paper. We all looked at it. We had a lot of discussion about it. Um, we looked at all of them and, and made the decision uh, that we felt like that we'll call it the best David Hills model was the best model. It was the harder model. It would have been a lot easier not to go to vote. We felt like it was best for the citizens to have their chance to, to hear about it and make a decision. But we looked at it and said, we felt like that was the best model because we felt like we could get the best candidate because it's a more secure model. Because if you look at the guy in Vestavia, Jeff, he's more secure in his job than in Mountain Brook. And, and um, so we felt like if we wanted to get someone high quality, we really wanted to get somebody who was felt like they're gonna come here, move their family here, that it had to be a secure job. Mm -hmm. And and if you'll see what happened in, in Hoover, the mayor got crossways with his city manager type guy and he fired him. Mm -hmm. And so then they didn't have anybody for a while. But, I mean, but, what you're saying makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. But then I think I also understood that the reason we were going to go ahead and let this council select an interim, I mean, a city manager is because you wouldn't want an interim in there because then they would not want to stay. I do, so I do want an interim. You know, anytime, you know. I think it's Nick, but Steph. Okay, okay well, anytime, you know, a head coach, football coach gets fired, they bring in an interim, right? Because they don't want to immediately hire, right? Sure. To just sort of, to take that period of time between, you know, when we adopt the new form of government and when the new council is able to do a full job search. And, I, and there are retired city managers who do this as their sort of post-career career, where they are itinerant and they go around and do this. You know, they're like preachers and rabbis do this and stuff too. So that's what I, and it sounds like Nick yeah. says, they're gonna start talking about it. I think that's how it should go. But, but, but that's how you say it should go. Let me ask you this. If you're saying, with our situation, with the mayor, that the actual Okay. I just want to understand that better. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, I don't know how those four people are going to be chosen drops of 10 to 4. It yeah. won't start till next week. That's right. I, I, I just want you to finish. I, I did want to clarify. So, number one, I mean, we we will still have an 11 member voting body until the new council comes into effect which would be november of 2025 okay? okay that voting body would be voted on in august of 2025 okay. so if this passes then we're going to stay with an 11 member council until the election of 2025 and in that election then the ballots are going to look different because you're going to be voting on four wards with one rep each. But it's no, nothing else is gonna change. Now, it is tricky, like you said, because of the mayor's uh, retirement, stepping back as a, as a uh, public official. But let me just tell you what that means really quick so everybody understands too. So our council president, Alex White, will become the acting mayor, okay? Our president pro tem, Walter Jones, my ward mate, will become the council president. In doing so, his Ward 3 seat will become vacant, okay? So that means we only have 10 people in council, and when that's vacant, we'll have to call an opening, basically, like uh, an announcement just like we would with any other board. We would, we would interview candidates, and then council will appoint a new counselor until 2025, and that's because it's less than a year until the election. appreciate you also saying that like if y'all weren't involved in this decision and they came up with let's do seven you know, six plus one you wouldn't say oh they made a mistake you wouldn't say they got it wrong and so that's reasonable so um and i, I think um you know going back to the uh, mountain brook model i mean sam's a great guy that had, had a great experience with it uh, i know you had some questions around the legality was there no way i mean Alex is a lawyer. We've got we've got lawyers in Homewood. I mean, the Was there no way to petition the state or to craft some sort of language that would would ease that? In so, the previous meeting, Sam Gast had recommended doing this via referendum because of power struggle every time they change mayors. He yeah, right. he's the person who has been doing this meetings. successfully for decades. He, so so it must have a way to work. Right? So he, I don't think he wants to say out loud too loudly that he is on legally shaky ground in Mount Brook. He refers to this, he says, there is conflicting language in the Alabama code about the duties of the mayor and the city manager. And he doesn't, I don't, and he says in a video that um, I think Nick shared, somebody shared it, he says, you guys should vote for this by, by referendum. He's very supportive of this. It's, it's from him that I first realized, and then also the way that Gretchen, you know, the, the tone of voice of like, oh, I think she also, Feel this, and she she is very supportive of the idea of codifying it. Um, but they're in the they're the ones in the shaky position. So I don't I don't know that Sam wants to go out there and like raise a big fuss about this because what it points out is the mayor has a case to fight for some power. Right. If he doesn't like what Sam's doing. Yeah. 
I mean, because, I mean, I've had some people that have come to me as like, well, what is the alternative if we vote no? And I was like, well, we've got a map with five, and we have an at-large mayor and an at-large uh, council president. Uh, the mayor would become ceremonial um, or, or work with the council. So, I mean, I, you know, I said this in the first meeting is that, you know, I like having a mayor uh, like McCluskey. He's got a soft touch. He's likable. You feel like he represents homeowners and the business. And then you got Alex, who's, you know, get it done, council president, Robert Trulli, who's a lawyer, all that stuff. That's two separate things. And I think I would lose a little bit, but I appreciate you bringing all this up. But I just, you know, I, it's unfortunate that the five has gotten stuck to this um, referendum. Everyone agrees the city manager's uh, necessary. Everyone agrees that perhaps we come down from 11, but, you know, it's unfortunate that those two are together. And I've said this to Nick, yeah. and I think that could be the, the thing that you know, causes people to not jump on board, which it stinks because we all want to jump on board with the city manager, but, you know, I, I feel like the process um, is now it's, it's, it's forcing us to choose not the best option. For and, and if we had some sort of rank choice voting, maybe it would work. Maybe it would work better in that way. But unfortunately, the way it works is there's one system that has to be put on the ballot, and you either vote yes or you vote no. And so what you have to debate is your ideal, and then which of these is closer to your ideal. And that's that's how I feel about it. Yes. What kind of guarantees are we going to have if? we have a city manager that we're not gonna have another embezzlement situation. And why was that not caught by some kind of auditor before, you know, at some point in time? I mean, there's never gonna be a guarantee, but I would say having somebody full-time at the top who's checking in on all of his departments is one of the easiest ways to make sure that, to not make sure, but to, um, <laughs> disincentivize that sort of behavior. Right now we have a lot of um, department heads and city employees that don't receive um, sufficient supervision by their boss, who is part-time. Patrick? Did we look at a full-time mayor situation? We did. Um, that's a great question. We, we have, that's actually something that was in the report, but it just didn't make it into, into this. Um, the, the difficulty with a full-time mayor for a city of our size is um, feeling confident that every four years you're going to have somebody who is both um, willing to step aside from their career to, to do this and has the level of expertise necessary um, to actually be like an expert at municipal governance. Yeah, here and then here. So I, I did, um, let me get up, let me get up. So I, I the question, my first question was about whether we could do a full-time mayor uh, whether that required a referendum or not. Um, earlier, you were speaking about, and this is really, I, this is where I have my biggest issue, is representation. So we're going from 11 current council members to five. No, it's five, one's at large. Yeah. It's five, one's at large. Okay. So, and people say, why do we have so many? Now, I can tell you from personal experience that we have been in wards, lived all over home. Okay, I've been here 40 years, born here, born, born in Brookwood, right? That's about as homeful as you can get, right? <laughs> we lived in Broadway, we lived in nice places, we lived in rough places, okay? You cannot tell me that all the wards and all the council persons and all the wards are the same. And you cannot tell me that there are not instances of where you can email your two council board members every single day of the week and you will not get a response if you're not the right person. That is a fact. Okay? I agree if you're you. taking away my ability to, to, to send an email to six more people who might who might say, hey, you know what? You know what? You, This issue is just a little bit important enough to maybe let me respond to you. I'm, I'm not emailing 11 people about a garbage can not getting picked up on a Friday. That's not what I'm emailing about. I'm gonna be emailing about real stuff, things that are affecting me and affecting my family and affecting a 
affecting our livelihood, affecting whether or not someone lives or dies peacefully. We're talking about real things. And you can't get an answer, and you're gonna tell me that somehow having less representation is better? That's not something I can agree with. I need to know a real reason, and I did come in November, and I made this point. And I said, hey, if we're going, if we're gonna do this, why can't we at least make sure that we're keeping as many as possible ward members and representatives for people so they can have a voice? That's our only voice. We're not gonna have a mayor. You're not gonna have a full-time mayor who, I, I appreciate, yeah, they may not be the wisest, they may not be the, the, the most, they may not even be good, but if it's a full-time mayor and, they, and they, they are accountable to you when they don't respond to you, when you have people who are accountable by vote, which a city manager may or may not be, right? That's, that's the bureaucracy kind of takes over there. And so I would like, I never got a clear answer on that. We don't know who drew these board maps. And so let me be clear, when I say that, what do I mean? They were, they were drawn by the state and the state legislature. And let me be clear that this is the state, same state legislature that drew twice had to draw twice and go to the Supreme Court of the United States twice for not listening and drawing the district boards correctly from the state of Alabama. That is a real thing. These are the same people who drew these boards. Now, I'm not saying they looked at little old Homewood and said, how can we screw everyone over? I don't think that's what they did. But maybe these aren't the most reliable people. I, I think you said a lot that really resonates with me. And so I'm going to say something, and then I'll, I'll let Nick, if, if there's more to say, because there's a lot to that. See you, Alice. The, the first thing that I would say is you never should have had to email a city councilor about a trash issue in the first place. If we had, but no, but my point is, but, but my point is those sorts of things should not be the purview of the city council. And it's, it's the fact of our sclerotic form of government that our city councilors have stepped up and been the point of contact for so many administrative issues because we don't have a well-functioning executive but structure. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. But, but to my point, I wasn't emailing them about administration issues. That's the point I was making. When I said garbage cans, mm -hmm. it wasn't an administrative function. It was a policy issue, and I can't get responses. That's a real thing. The council people were elected though, to represent you in your work. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. But here's what the I would say. The manager was not elected by me. But, right, but the manager, so the manager would be hired by the council that you elected, and the manager would be fired by the council that you elected if they don't meet the... Uh, well, and if I'm dealing with the manager, how is the council going to know that? Unless what do you I mean? have looping the council in on that, on that issue. Well, right, that's what I would do. If you're not getting the kind of response that you want from the city manager, you go talk to their boss, the council. That's, a, that's exactly what I would do. Listen to me, I elected my city council person, and that's who I'm going to go to with an issue I have with the city. And, and I purpose that may be. Yeah, all right. I just want to make a point, too, in this consideration. I mean, and, and that is, you know, Robbie's issue is not an administrative issue, but council's getting a lot of administrative issues. If the city manager exists, then a council email inbox is hopefully not as cluttered with administrative issues so that the focus can be on policy and things that need to be addressed. And that's kind of what I wanted to point to from the slides before is the city manager is going to handle the operational issues, you know, in structure so that we can, as counselors, focus on those higher level issues. Because, I mean, there's only a finite amount of time in a day. And I'd much rather focus on the you know, visionary issues, the real issues, as you say, Robbie. But if, I, but if the other issues are out there too, then I've got to respond to those as well, right? In a timely manner. Well, so in the balance, would you that not? is a trade off that, you know, that I feel like is of great value with having a city. So you're saying that in the future, there's, I mean, it's not like some, everything, the switch is going to get turned, yeah. people are going to stop emailing the council person, yeah. whether they're correct or poor. Correct. So the council will no longer get inundated with those emails somehow, well, just because there's a city manager? Hopefully over time, council becomes to learn that the city manager is a centralized point of contact who is responsive to their needs for administrative issues. But... If that city manager does not reply to a resident, or if a resident has an issue where advocacy is needed to elevate an ongoing issue, 
or a you know, serious issue that really takes um, you know, getting around a table and talking about how to solve problems and needs, then, then your accounts are still there to advocate for you in those times. But hopefully, the city man manager is a centralized person handling the administrative issues and doing so professionally. And honestly, I want to mention one thing too, which is as counselors, we need a city manager as well to have data on, on, on decision making, right? Like we really don't have as much data as we need when we look at things like budgeting and capital projects and, and doing strategic planning. I mean, city manager is gonna be a tool for us to have data and trends and information to make these strategic you know, decisions that we need to be making. So I just, I see the value because of that, you know, but, but I hear your concerns and I'm sorry that no one, you know, the lack of responsiveness to anyone is highly unacceptable. And, and I, and I, and so let me, you know, and you touched on the point there, right? Is like, I agree, I, I, I would like a city manager, look, I want, people want management, they want someone who knows what they're doing, I'm not disagreeing with that. When you have a lack of representation, like you said, that hey, if you have an issue, now you can contact the council person. These aren't at large positions. I'm gonna have to contact my board representative, okay? And if I'll, if I've only got one, and they don't want to listen to me, then I've been I've been effectively pushed out of government. I no longer have a voice in government, and I don't believe that that is that is due process under American law. I really don't. I don't believe that's what the political system is meant for. And that does happen at home. And I know people here may not believe it, some people may, but it does happen. That's, and that's fair. And I want to talk about that for a second, Sam, because the structure of wards and districts works like this. It's set up so that each area of the community, of the city, has people representing them on council, right? So we want a, a representative from West Homewood, a representative from Edgewood, you know, and, and all the other wards, okay? But once that counselor is on city council, they represent all of this, all of it, they do. So if you ever don't get an answer here, because this is your rep, sorry, let me, let me point out myself. <laughs> if you ever don't get an answer here, then email everyone just like you did, Rob, because Everyone is responsible to you as a resident. This is my mate. And, and, and I've watched, like, especially since the council was able to put them on Zoom, I've seen a lot more council meetings. And I, I believe you rarely have ever seen a council vote, split vote. But even if you do, it's always, and I've heard actual council members say this in public meetings, so you can, you can go back and pull it up on Zoom, that they defer to the ward representative. They defer to the ward representative. And that's why if you're gonna, if it's not gonna be at large, and on top of that, you're gonna keep the wards, then you're effectively pushing people out. They don't have any wards. Because they're gonna say, well, what did your ward representative say? Well, I can't really get a response out of them. Well, it sounds like, you know, they, they're telling me they got a bunch of emails, they're not showing anymore, but they got a bunch of emails saying that this is not what people want. <coughs> I mean, and that's the answer you're going to get, and then they're going to say, well, we're going to deport to our war representative. This is real. I'm talking about this is real things that happen, and I'm talking to experience. So this is what happens. Well, and this is how you're effectively put out of government. And, and I, I think in instances where there's board appointments that, you know, for committees and boards, there is a defer to the war representative. But I mean, there's been plenty of issues where where I chimed in, and others have as well, um, you know, when it was outside of our ward. And, I, and so I'm just gonna politely just say that I think ward representation is important because otherwise you could have all four ward reps right here, you know, on the same block. And you would, whoever, whatever 51% of the opinion is, then they control the whole area, irrespective of what the primary perspective is here, here, here. You're down to three votes though deciding everything. Three votes now control everything at home. 
Three votes control everything in Humboldt. Yep, this and passes. Three votes. Okay. I actually. It's it, it is. Three votes. It is. And, I, and I'll tell you this. Everything you're talking about, Robbie, your experience, the distrust, the concern, three votes. I mean, I think it goes from exactly what we're going back to in recent history, where we've had issues that cause us to have concern, okay? It's, it, I mean, the embezzlement. You know, somebody asked, well, how come we didn't catch it with an audit? Well, it was still within 12 months. I mean, that audit hadn't even been conducted yet. The last two transactions happened in the last week before the person lost their position. Um, so that's not saying a city manager could have prevented it, but the checks and balances that are in place need to e be even better. I do agree with that. Now, Alice, you've been waiting very patiently. I want to give you a chance to ask a question. Uh, thank you. And we've got to leave. I got to pick our son up and get him to the airport so we can have you, Dallas. And one of my representatives is here, John Harden. And whenever I had an issue, John would never write this with me. So thank you for that, John. I appreciate that. Admit it, I appreciate what you bring to the council. You bring a viewpoint that is slightly different from the rest of the council, except you and Melanie up there, which I appreciate very much. Can't thank you for your hard work. And here's why I'm against reducing the number of representatives. So when we moved to Homewood in 1990, <clears throat> you know, most of the people I work with are either in Vestadia or Mountain Brook. My wife and I wanted to move to a city which was racially diverse, socioeconomically diverse, and politically diverse. And you know, you can drive through Homewood and you'll see Harris Walk signs, you'll see Trump dance signs. I dare you to wait again. If you can drive through Mountain Brook, you can find a Harris Walk sign or Vestadia and find a Harris Walk sign. Let me know. Okay. So then I thought, well, what about the socioeconomic <clears throat> and the racial differences? Um, so I went to U.S. News and World Report, and I looked up Homewood High School, Mountain Brook High School, and the Sadie Hills High School. <clears throat> so from a racial standpoint, <clears throat> Homewood is 38% diverse. Mountain Brook is 5%. I can't believe you thought. The state is more than I thought, it's 18% diverse. That's why it's okay for them to have only three votes that decide matters in the state in Mountain Brook. And furthermore, as far as socioeconomics, and I grew up on the lower end of the socioeconomic scale, my dad was a pastor, my mother, well, she retired from being a professor when I was born, that's just the way things were back then. So from a socioeconomic standpoint, <clears throat> According to U.S. World and Report, 28% of the children in Homewood schools are economically disadvantaged, <clears throat> which is something we really value. Our kids have to go to school with children from all walks of life, and that <clears throat> was so important to them. <laughs> I shouldn't be emotional about it. Anyway, Mount Brook, <clears throat> 3%. Right. So Homewood is 28% socioeconomically disadvantaged. Mount Brook, 3%. It's hard to believe it's that high, John, like you said earlier. And this state is 10%. So that's why um, my wife and I want to keep the number of representatives we have. We want to have a city manager with the same number of representatives we have. And I'm sorry, we do have to run because our kids got to do it. Ditto, that's why we moved here too. Yeah, me too. I, I grew up, yeah. I grew up in Mount Brook and I'm never going back there. Um, I, uh, I also, I also would love to keep the same council composition in a codified city manager. It's not, a, it's not an available option in the state of Alabama. That, I think that, you know, if we, if we could vote on that, I think, just, it seems like most people in this room would be 100% on board. Unfortunately, it's not an available option. And again, what I, what I think about here is the benefits to the city of having a full-time steady hand at the tiller, to me, are so strong that even though we are going from this, we would be going from this column to this column, right? Um, it doesn't seem to me 
that that structure is so deleterious, so harmful to all of these cities that they are, you know, the, I mean, Las Vegas Hills is very different from a lot of these other cities, right? These cities are all, all very different from each other, and it's the most common form of government. If you were spinning up a municipality in Alabama that had about 25,000 people in it, and you said, what kind of government would we have? You'd say, oh, five member council, that seems to be the, the way things go. So I think that was, a, frankly, just a, a phenomenal explanation of why this is such a special place. And I think that you can feel that way, as I do, and also believe that this is a good change for our city. Um, what you just said, exactly what I said to my wife when it was like, well, if we're moving back to Alabama, we got, we got to move the wrong way. So. Thank you. Thank you both for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, Nick, I just I have two questions. The first, if you could just clarify what you said earlier. I want to be sure I understand the school board. So can you tell me, just to make sure we're on the same page, how many uh, board, board members we currently have now and how they're selected? And then if this passes, how many will there be and how will they be selected? Okay. Um, okay. So currently there's five school board members and there's a vacancy that comes up approximately April of every year and it's been on a rotation. There's currently five wards and so we rotate it through each ward and let those two ward representatives basically facilitate the selection process of interviewing candidates from their ward and then making a nomination of the best candidate and that person being placed by the full council onto the school board. So that's five currently and it will continue to be five because that number is governed by state law. And as I referenced earlier, what I said about the clarification that everyone is actually at large and that we um, are choosing them you know, at our discretion basically on that practice. So that's what was told me by me yesterday by the city attorney that that's how it works. Um, and, on what, and so I just wanna clarify that I'd also like to talk to Dr. Hefner and see if the school has an additional map or anything where they're actually using that as a you know additional layer of policy um, but it is currently five and it will continue to be five the same is for the planning commission and the board of zoning adjustment those bodies are the, the number is based on state code so those will not change um, the, all the other boards i mentioned environmental historic preservation parks um, those are of a given size currently through ordinance of the council and it is our intent that they would all stay the same size and representation. If you go to the school board site, it actually lists the person rep where the ward number rep. They do, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Yeah. Former BZA member here and there are five members, uh, regular members and some student member regular members and that is state law and it says when I first, first came on the uh, BCA, they gave us a handbook. And in the handbook, it states the state code. And it just simply said five regular members and two super numeraries. It did not say five more. And so I asked the question how, how this says just five, but we're doing it by board. And I was told then, and this was nine, ten years ago, that it was because we had five boards and it fit in the same way with the school board, I was told that it was built in, you know, it was kind of a blessing to us that we already had five boards and that they all required five, so they chose to um, choose them that way. Does that make sense? Well, and then you had a second question. I did, and you can answer this now or later, but um, it might be helpful if you could give us maybe an example of um, how something would move through our government now versus some of the new process, like if an ordinance or something governing policy or something. Because I did hear you say that we have a full-time chief of staff now, and I assume we still would after the vote. I don't know, but I know the role is different than a city manager, but maybe if there's some kind of example kind of walking through like what it, look, what it should look like now versus what it should look like post, uh, if it's- Adoption now. of the structural change. So, I don't know that there would still be a full-time chief of staff. I mean, some of these things would be decided as far as positions. Um, 
through the budgeting process and also through a city manager who comes in and possibly looks at the organizational structure of the city and what positions are missing or which one are considered duplicative, so on and so forth. Um, I mentioned there's no centralized HR functions, but that would be possibly a situation where we need to look at um, hiring new positions, for example. But the process. Um, so currently, a lot of things that end up on the council agenda end up on the council agenda because they come through city staff or they come through a council representative um, or a counselor, yeah, maybe just wants to research an issue um, to put it on the agenda or a commission like the beautification board wants to put an item on committee. Now these are, there's several channels to get something <coughs> on the agenda for committees of council, okay? And then after the committee discusses it, then it goes to the full council for a vote, okay? So that's how it currently exists. And then under the new structure, the city manager would become somebody who would put items on the agenda, but still counselors could do the same and city staff could do the same. But the one difference that I think is notable is because the voting body would be five, there would not be separate council committees as they exist now, right? Because the council committees themselves are five. So what we'd be looking at is you would be having council meetings uh, most likely twice a month still as the full council. And then just pulling the city as an example, you would have basically council work sessions, which would replace some of the work in, in between whole council meetings where you have discussion and, and go further into items. Because I, I don't know how many of you actually come to council meetings regularly, but honestly, most of the discussion occurs in the committee meetings, not the council meetings. Um, so the committees would not exist anymore because everyone would basically be functioning in office. That's <coughs> right. The finance, the, the council committees would no longer exist unless the city manager came in and created some type of other structure that would kind of fill that void. But all the committees, like the board committees that are external resident committees or boards, those would all still exist. And the intent is with the exact same representation as they have. Thank you. Yeah. Well, is that going to be more time required from the council representative? Is there going to be all of those committees then? Um, well, currently, I still, I'm on three committees, but I attend every single committee meeting. And every time I show up, Melanie's there too, and Carlos is there too. Um, and, and John is as well. I mean, basically, even though we're only on certain committees, we're already going to all the committee meetings for the most part. I just wanted to make a comment that the gentleman just left about the homogenous of uh, the city of Mount, Mount That is totally true. But if you look at those cities that are up there that use that five member council, they are not. The best state is in Mount Brooks of the world. Those only exist the best state in Mount Brooks for the most part in the state. You've got many socioeconomically, racially, educational, whatever diversity in many of those cities that mirror what Hollywood looks like, and it does work for them. That's just my comment. Question should still be going to city council. The administrative issues should be going to a city manager. Okay, so we have 11 council members making, getting all these calls. And you said that the committees would be disbanded and the council people would be taking on a lot of those things that the committees did, correct? That's the, so committees, meaning the subcommittees within the city council. I 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like none of the external boards would change. But I yes. understand. I've been to those committee meetings too. Okay. So what I'm saying is we have part-time council members, yet they're going to take on all this additional responsibility of those subcommittees that are now doing the work and preparing it for recommendation to the council. So, I mean, my answer is similar somewhat to the response to your question, which is all the counselors are going to those committee meetings already anyway. I understand that, but we're only going to have three council members. Well, five, I mean, five. four. Four council five. members. Five. 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 What's the matter? Okay. Uh, we we have five five you would have six voting. You, you, that, right. you can't have an even number. Right. Exactly. Is that not right? You're correct. It is four board representative oh, yeah. counselors and. Oh, you didn't? Okay. <laughs> you knew what I was looking for. Yes. Four board representative counselors and one at large mayor who's the, a member of the voting body who serves a function similar to the council president now. So, yes, four counselors, one mayor. And actually, that's the ballot question, too. The ballot question says it flat out. So, when you go to vote, that's what it's going to say is. In support of the council manager draft, four, four councilors, one at large mayor. And your point is that why they call it the mayor? Because it's really the council president. Do they call it the mayor in that system to solve your problem? Uh, I don't know why they call it the mayor. I don't know that it solves that problem necessarily. Maybe it's just the idea of like, we don't even have a mayor. It's like, what you do have a person who's voted on by the entire city. And, and ask to represent the entire city's well, interests. We do that with our council president, too. He has a large say. Right. Well, but mayoral duties that come up that are difficult. Most cities, most cities don't have a like at-large council president that's distinct from the wards. So we ha we're familiar with the idea of, like, oh, the council president has, like, a different, like, voting body than most of the ward reps, but most cities are not like that. So that may be why it's less comfortable for like a city to go to that because they don't have a at-large pre council president. So Alex will be here as a proclamation too. <laughs> Carolyn, I think still had a kind of a pending aspect of your question. And the only other additional way that I know how to respond to it, I mean, there'll be, all counselors will still have the committee work through the work session, essentially. But instead of working through items in committee, which are subdivided, you know, like I'm on public works and special issues, instead of just working really on those two committees, I'll be working on all the items, right? And so, yes, it seems like more work for a given counselor, but really that counselor has to go throughout the entire process anyways, because eventually it's coming to full council to vote anyway, eventually. So to be informed, you have to work it all the way through. And on top of that, there's currently 11 counselors, and we're okay going to five because we know the value. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of something not spoke about much, but I mean, that means six of us at least are not gonna have a council seat you know, next term. And that's that's okay with us because we see the value in this. Um, and we because that city manager not only helps with the administrative functions, but is gonna help our guide our council forward through a visioning and strategic process in the future so we can become the best homewood for moving forward in addition to all the accountability and governance aspects that'll be gained. Yeah, right here. I guess one of my questions would be like, I think John left maybe, but you know, his role in his day-to-day -day job is in developing real estate. He typically has used himself in a lot of those votes. So in this new deal here, how does that work? Do you now have a member that recuses themselves because of conflict of interest, or are they referred to as a, as a subject matter expert on that, or like how does that work? Yeah, it, I mean, it is a good question. It, it, may, it may mean that all of a sudden now, you know, it takes three votes to progress an item, but only four people are voting. I mean, it's going to be the same situation. Um, what happens if it goes two to two? If it goes two to two? 
Uh, and there's a form to the full council three. No, because it's four. It's still going to be three. You got to have above fifty percent. Yeah, you got to have fifty. Yeah, you need fifty percent. Yeah. So you you need three votes in that one. So you guys brought up a great question. You cut down your numbers. That certainly could become an issue. My opinion is it's the it's the residents who decide who your representative is, and you should know what their day job is before you vote on them, and whether or not they'll have conflicts of interest. Well, uh, but there are certain issues pop up that yeah. you can't control. Well, that's that's true. That yeah. that'll always be the case. But I mean, I, I'm just saying. Well, downtown I, rezoning. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, I did the math on the rezoning, and um, you know, Harden's company was in control or had an interest in maybe 30 percent of the real estate in the park. Is that accurate? Was that the case? What, what was your question? What would happen with a big issue, which is I think what a lot of us are worried about. But, like Alex said in the presentation, most of the most of the things are not contentious except for the big things. So in that situation where you have someone that's conflicted out and you can't, you know, wait for them to come back in, how does how does that how would that work? You'd have to get three votes. You'd have to get three votes, just like an issue where there's somebody isn't conflicted out, which means that it's gonna have to be a yeah, it's gonna have to be a strong consensus thing. What can I can I just briefly talk about? A way that I and I was not on the city council, so I might not get all the details here correctly. But if I envision how this could work, I think the am waste process is such a good example because, from my understanding, by the time it came to the council's attention that oh we we need to change our trash collection process because we cannot staff the the people like find the people to do it, it was art. It was at um, a very severe level that they had not been adequately informed. And I think that comes down to um, a lack of supervision over that department that was not being fully communicated. You know, the kind of thing that a city manager would be, be like, hey, we're starting to see some issues with retention, let's do some mitigation efforts instead of, this is a crisis. And then by the time that came up, then it was a very short time frame before it had to be implemented to the point where they were just like, just use your recycling bins or just, you, you know, you're not gonna get new bins or, you know. All these sorts of things, and then the amount of hours that each of our counselors had to deal with the process of managing all of the various different issues that came up. Now, I think, I think that um, trash collection has improved due to a lot of man hours. Right. I mean, but but in my in my what but but couldn't it have been so much more to the benefit of our city if our city counselors instead of processing dozens of um, like angry emails from their constituents who are justifiably upset that this was like a rushed transition without like a clear like set of like good processes and timelines, if they were able to, first of all, get information way back and deliberate and think on it, and then maybe make some mitigation efforts and maybe we wouldn't even be in this situation, you know, we wouldn't have had to make the change anyway. And moreover, they're able to be focused on the strategic decisions, right? Think about the amount of hours that they put into the strategic decision to switch trash collection versus the amount of hours that the city councilors put into the tactical issues of this bin didn't get picked up, this bin didn't get picked up. That's like, it's completely out of balance. What they should be doing is devoting their time to thinking about those strategic issues, like how do we want to provide our services to our constituents versus, oh shoot, they missed this Wednesday, got screwed up, and there's a whole, you know, I, I just, that's the kind of thing that I'm seeing as a potential, like, like how is the council going to have time to do all the work that they're supposed to do? Because hopefully the city manager is the conduit for all of those complaints. But, but going back, you keep going back to the city manager. Nobody disagrees. Mm -hmm. That would be the city manager. I would like to go back to a point you made about things getting so bad before it came to the right person that you had to get something done. Does that person still work? I'm very much looking forward to a city manager looking at all of our department heads. They report to the mayor. The mayor. Okay, then who was the mayor in all this? Exactly. You're making my point for me. But the other two systems are weak. I can't 
you know what? They call my contacts and ask them to investigate Sam Gaston being on shaky ground at Mountain Brook. Well, Sam Gaston seems to think he is. What? Good question. Uh, number one, number one representation. Now you're waiting number two. Yes, there was an option to do this one with a seven member council. Or 11. No, 11 was not an option. It was seven. Why was finance chosen to make this call? I can just say this from my recollection that the mayor charged the council with taking the issue over for study. That it went to finance and finance formed the ad hoc ad hoc committee, and then they reported back and it, it went through finance. But that's, I mean, if you look at the agenda for finance, I um, mean, they 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 handle it probably because they handle a lot of contracts, and essentially, in some form or another, this will probably be a contract. It seems like this would have come out of special issue. I mean that's at the that's at the discretion of the council president and subsequent chairs on which which committee go through. Um, so I, I don't know that really the the committee that it went through determined the end result. Um, finance committee made a recommendation to full council, yes, um, and it, it was both both in finance and council it, it was approved unanimously. But that doesn't mean that when it was there in finance, we didn't disagree on aspects of it. I mean, we talked about it. I mean, I, for one, was uncomfortable with Bob at first and expressed that opinion. But then I talked to others who were great with Bob, and that was the majority of the opinion of people who I spoke to, including the voting body who made the ultimate decision. So as I reviewed the information, and I, I basically evolved my um, my level of comfort with the five member voting block. I mean, that was it because it is drastic, and I was uncomfortable with that. And I looked at it more, and now I am willing to you know progress with the model as proposed because I see the value. Nick, to your point, uh, when this first looked like it was actually going to come to a uh, referendum, and I actually started paying attention to it. I went back trying to determine has Homewood always had this many counselors? You know, like was, was there a sudden change like in the 1940s or something? Well, you know, we need more representation, we need more representation. I went back as far as the record reflects that I could find in 1960, and we have the current council structure that we have. So it, it, it's my understanding that if the city of Homewood were just somehow formed today, you know, magically. If this, if this is a brand new city and all these residents want to move there and we said, we want to be a city and all that, that we would not be allowed by the state of Alabama to have the current system that we have now, that it would be grandfathered under the old system. But it, for future uh, presentations, I mean, you guys might want to start out just by saying that we cannot have a city manager under the current structure unless we reduce the Five or so. Well, we can. So yeah, I mean, I know. Then under two, well, well I, I meant under under the number one option. Yeah, sorry, yeah. But um, my, my question was actually about the map. The uh, I know the, the, the state actually made the map. It seems like any time that there are maps redrawn for electoral purposes, that there are always some sort of core challenges, either for census or diversity or whatever, you know, twenty or, or whatever terms. Are we pretty confident that this map will hold up to legal scrutiny? Um, so the map, like you said, came through the state through a committee. Um, and, and one thing that we actually looked at the comparison of the five word map and the four word map that did um, kind of address that consideration is we feel like there was less change to the map. Um, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of change to the map if you compare four and five. Also, if you go to the Google Drive, it shows some of the demographics for each of the four wards. And um, and so, as far as legal scrutiny, I mean, basically, um, anyone could contest it, and that's the way that's the way it is. I mean, but but I mean, I feel confident with with the map that we've you know been handed over. And very, 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 very fortunately, 
Um, city politics, municipal politics are not party affiliated. And so my, there's not going to be a partisan. My goodness. If, yeah. if, then yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And this has nothing to do with this referendum. But I, start, I see it sort of start to see that that trend started happening last election, particularly on social media, where you had a few people coming forward like demanding to know who their city councilor was voting for for president. I think that's totally uncalled for, and I hope it's not a road that we ever go down. Anyway, that's just and, and that's also one of the reasons why we're having the election. Uh, my understanding is the reason we're not having it just as a ballot question in November is we want it to be very clear that this is not this is not meant to be a partisan decision. And I don't, and I, from just, I, who knows? But anecdotally to me, I, I see people from all across the political spectrum who support this, and people from all across the political spectrum who do not support it. And I think that's great. Like that's, you know, because it's, it means that we're engaging with it much more um, intellectually than just saying, oh, the, the party that I support supports this, so I support it. People are actually really thinking this through, and I think that's good. I just want to quickly say again, we're not we're not finished, but I noticed that people are you know a couple are having to leave. So thank you all for uh, for your time here so far. I mean we'll continue to ask questions in this format, um, but also when when we conclude, more than happy to continue to discuss any questions you don't feel comfortable asking, you know, in front of the entire group. Um, did you have one more question in the back? No. Um, before we wrap up, though, I just want to say, Councillor Gear, Councillor Ademont, is there anything that you want to, I mean, thank you for your time here as well. Is there anything you would like to say that hasn't been said or um, just want to give you that opportunity before we officially conclude? Sound good? Okay. I encourage you to talk to, you know, all your representatives, um, let them know how you feel. And also, um, I think, you know, this is a very important consideration. Um, so, again, I just encourage you all to continue to review the information that's out there and make the you know make the decision you're comfortable with because that's the whole value of this process. Residents get to vote. You know, if if it fails, then we'll figure out what's next. If it passes, then we have a great new opportunity to institutionalize the city manager role. But if it does fail, I will say this because about the state code, it will not come up again for three more years because that's in the state code. You, if, if, the, if the measure fails, you can't vote it on it again for three years. So just kind of wanted to reference that, um, not as a tactic by any means, to, to encourage you to vote a certain way. I just want you to know the reality of that code. Um, thanks. I just have one question. Yes. Real quick. Um, did you have to have a referendum to hire a city manager? No. And so that my thought is this sign that says vote yes, city manager, really doesn't tell everybody what we're voting for. And I think that is one of the problems that the city, uh, the people of Homewood are having a problem with, is why does that 